Good morning, thanks for tuning in. Hey, I wanna share something I picked up from uh, James Montgomery Boyce in his book, Come to the Waters. It's a devotional book that, that I've been reading. And uh, so let's take a look at Genesis chapter two, verse seven. It says, then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils and he became a living person. Can, can you actually picture this? And I never really thought about it, but if God breathed into the nostrils of Adam, was it air? Is, are we surrounded by the breath of God? Is that what this stuff is? And here, just, just stop doing it for a little while. Just stop breathing, breathing it in. It's really important if you know what I'm saying. We need the, the breath of God around us. We need the air that is around us. So it says that, that he became uh, a living person a living creature. Some translations would say a living soul. And one of the things that's different about Adam and Eve from all the other animals, because they, they too could breathe, they, you know, mammals breathe the, the same way that, that we do, but it's not only that we are alive, we're aware that we're alive, right? That's what makes us human beings. We're aware that we're being we're aware that, oh, okay, I'm not going to live forever. We have this awareness of time. We have this awareness of, of other people. We were created according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. In the very image of God, we became these living beings. I like what it says in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 22. Stop trusting in man who has but a breath in his nostrils. Of what account is he? In other words, look to God because he's the one who isn't reliant upon the next breath. Like I was just saying, you stop breathing, you stop living. We need to trust in the source of real life, and that's God. And what an intimate way for him to create us. He took us from the dust of the earth. I think that in eternity, one of the things that we're going to be so amazed at is how God used the stuff of earth, and as the, the, the master, uh, like a magician, creator, got these human bodies, and then he breathed life into them. Something that science has yet to replicate. They can, they can modify life, but create it, that's, that's a whole other story. So we don't want to get trust in other people because they're just the same as us. But God is the source of life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, it compares and contrasts the first Adam with the second Adam. The second Adam is Jesus. And here's what it says. Uh, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, meaning Christ, became a life-giving spirit. So other people, they've got breath in their lungs and, okay, they're alive. But if you want somebody who doesn't even need to do that to, to be alive, Jesus doesn't have to have breath to be alive. He's the source of life. He's the bread of life. He's, he's living water. He's, he's the entire source of everything that is alive. He's the one that we want to tap into. He's the one that we want to draw our strength from. And do you know, today he wants to give that to you. And he promised to give us his spirit, his spiritual DNA he implants within us so that we can become more like him. Just Rejoice today that God gave you life, he made you a human being, and then he redeems our lives. God bless you. Have a great day.